All right. Shalom. Um, first and foremost, giving all praise, glory, and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashim, Rahab, Wadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone who were well. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, 144,000. Shalom, um, Barak, and I'm going to just title this Lord Willing. All right. Lord Willing. All right. Um, why do I say Lord Willing? Um, because on this day, in about a couple of hours, we're going to have a sign in the heaven. All right, that everybody's talking about the solar eclipse, okay? And we know what the scriptures say about signs in the heaven and what they mean. I mean, these are these are uh, signs of times that we're going to enter into. All right, it doesn't mean the world is going to end. It doesn't mean you're gonna you're gonna guarantee some natural disaster is going to happen on that day at that moment. Some people are saying, you know, the Yellowstone volcano is going to explode. That's not what the sign in the heaven denotes. It denotes a time period that we're getting ready to go into. And we are getting ready to go into a time period. Okay? A time period of the end of destruction. Lord willing. Okay? We we really do not want to be here another five years. That, that, would, that just sounds crazy to me, man. Okay? Now, if you're in the mindset of wanting this place to end, you know, days like today, it's like, man, it's like, a, oh, shit, man. What if the Lord really does move us to this phase this week and then you start questioning like oh well, am i prepared what's this is my faith shored up and that and those are good questions to have man that's a that's a that's the signs of a, of a righteous humble man because you already know that our bodies are destroyed you already know that things that we could have did better that we should have did that we didn't do right and you want to make sure the most high you know is gonna have mercy on you man <laughs> all right so as much as we pray for these days to come all right you know it's still an anxiety there so i want to read a little bit of this in second Ezra's. all right but ultimately these things are beautiful man this place needs to end okay it needs to go down and, and never return all right uh but this is second Ezra's chapter 2 verse 10 it says thus saith the lord Yahweh unto Ezra, tell my people that i will give them the kingdom of jerusalem which I would have given unto Israel, all right? So this is the time, all right? Where the Lord is finally gonna take the kingdom out of Esau's hand and give it to his true beloved people, the Israelites, man, who are no other people. They're not spiritual Israelites. It's not, it's not a modern day Christian that, that, that think they spiritually grafted in. No, it's talking about the seed and lineage of Jacob, okay? who had the 12 sons if you descend patrilineal patrilineally through those through those men then you are an israelite and there is a chance for redemption okay verse 11 it says their glory also will i take unto me and give these the everlasting tabernacles which i had prepared for them all right and this is the time that we're in man this is why it's gonna look really scary on this side but that's that's intentional okay because we have to go through something you know in order to get something all right verse 12 they shall leave the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor they shall neither labor nor be weary all right and we all know we're laboring right now i'm on a, on a break at the plantation right now man okay and, and even people in this world that that have money that have you know substance i mean really if you if you just put your money in a bank and a savings account guess what that money's going to dwindle away because they got inflation and things of that nature all right if you own your house outright but then you don't pay the property taxes guess what you can still come and take so you you have to work in this society okay or or you just get so much wealth where you just let it you know evaporate to the end of your life you know but but basically the spirit of work is on our people here man and in the kingdom that spirit is not going to be on us okay we're not we're not going to have to work now we're industrious people we're going to work and do things that we want to do right but that's different than having the i mean i gotta go in and clock in or nine to five today you know that 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 ain't gonna be heard of man all right But go and ye shall receive, pray for few days unto you that they may be shortened. All right. And this is one of the signs that we got today in this eclipse. 
that shows you that we're in the time, all right, where the end is about to be manifest. Well, it is manifest, okay? This is a sign that we have very few days left, okay? It, it can't get any more, you know, you can't get any more symbology out of this, man, because one thing I just realized is that the time period between the eclipse of 2017 and today, all right, it's not quite seven years. It's closer to 600, 6.66 years. All right, <laughs> just think about that. You know, because this last eclipse happened in August, all right, the eighth month of the year, and this one is happening in April. Okay, the fourth month of the year. Okay, so, so, so it's really six years and eight months has passed. All right. And eight is two thirds of 12. So you have six years plus two thirds of 12, you know, 6.66 .66 roughly, you know. So, although it's the seventh calendar year, you know, in this, it's in the seventh year, all right? It's not, uh, or Salakia, so uh, it's in the year that will be the seventh year. It's not quite seven years between the two eclipses because it's not quite a year part you know all of these things the most high is showing it man the shape of it is the thought of brother about a good point on camp this friday or saturday salakia uh, about the thought being the last letter of the alphabet man all right what does that mean okay why is it passing over uh, seven cities called nineveh okay you know why why is this happening basically uh two three weeks after the passover you know really it's two weeks after the passover because uh yeah the passover is on a full moon that week of the full moon and and the uh this is a new moon coming up all right so roughly about two weeks you know Another thing was that the that, that eclipse that passed in October, man, that was two weeks after uh after the uh, October seventh thing went down. You know? And that put the whole earth into a new o October seventh was a new uh uh time period, man. Alright? So I believe that lunar eclipse that happened, that marked a new uh sign of a time, man. All right, I'm gonna get that real quick before I keep going because that's what these things are for, to mark times, all right? They're not gonna mark an event, so don't get to the point where it's go this is gonna mean that the missiles are gonna hit this day or the earthquake is gonna hit that day. No, these are, the, the things in the heavens are for times and divisions of times. I'll prove that real quick. Genesis 1 and 14, and the most high, the powers said, let there be lights in the firmament to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament heaven to give light up on the earth and it was so all right and you can keep you know going and reading okay because just like the sun determines the end of a day the moon determines the end of a month okay there are other things in the heavens that denote certain things man now we, we don't understand all of it like we did at one point or that we will in the kingdom okay but we know these things comets and all of these things showing up in the in the heavens these are not coincidences man all right these things happen in their time and in and in their cycles all right now why do certain comets have 71 year you know revolutions cycles you know well we don't know man you know you could probably do like a, an analysis of what was going on in the earth around these times to, to get a little bit closer but ultimately the lord said we wouldn't know the actual time okay but we would see signs that would let us know that we're close the scriptures say just like the summer uh the summer fruit bloom let me see if i can find that Yeah. Mark 13. 
and 28 now learn a parable of the fig tree when ye when her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves ye know that the summer is near okay now do it does that mean you know that the exact day of summer no but you got an idea all right and that's where we are this is why we're excited this is why we don't think nothing's gonna happen specifically on this day you know but we know that this marks a time period man lord willing the the very the, like the the jacob's trouble is needed in the earth man all around the earth okay you got jake wilding out in south america doing all kind of wickedness all right it's got to go okay let me go back to second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 go and ye shall receive pray for few days unto you that they may be shortened the kingdom is already prepared for you watch all right and this is the day of watching even heathen are watching man they don't believe in the most high you know but they're watching man all right and we always tell you to watch man always all right it says take heaven and earth to witness for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good for I live saith the Lord Jehovah man and that cuts all of these people that don't believe they just think these are random uh, uh, occurrences in the sky no the most I say I live and, the, and these signs are gonna be proof of it man the most I could just show you uh, uh, seven moons in the sky coming up soon if you wanted to man then what y'all scientists gonna say, say you astronomers okay then what you gonna say all right and the most I said he's gonna do things like that that's gonna make the wisdom of this world seem foolish okay but we just gotta we just gotta wait and see man it's a thing of patience okay but it says the heaven and the earth are here to witness it man okay now concerning the thing i was speaking about earlier all right now well, what if the lord set off a big earthquake and things started and then things you know started going crazy left man you can't talk to nobody the cell phones are down the power's out the scriptures say this time we're getting ready to go through man is nothing like anything the earth has ever seen all right and if you're not covered all right death is going to be is, is going to be a form of mercy in that day when you see what's going on all right so we're going to need the mind of 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 a, of a sound man okay and the scriptures say that he he's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a uh, uh, a sound mind. You know, and that's Isaiah thirty three. We're gonna we're gonna need that man. That's gonna be a requirement. Okay. Verse twenty seven, Second Judges chapter two, verse twenty seven. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrow be sorrowful. But thou shalt be merry and have abundance. And that you have to remind yourself of that, man. That first day, like I keep thinking about that episode of The Walking Dead. All right. When uh, when Rick woke up in the hospital and all of these zombies, he didn't know what was going on, man. He didn't know where to, you know. That day is coming, man. Or you going to, all of a sudden, you're going to see all of the gas stations just got lines dropped around the corner all of a sudden. Traffic blocked up. You know, all of a sudden, you can't get a cell phone signal. And most people, when they lose their cell phone signal, they ain't gonna know what to do. All right? But the Lord gave us what? The, the scriptures say, let me get that. Before I speak on it. Okay. Let me see. Just the one I want. So lock you the uh this internet connection thing is, is acting up. No. 
let me look it up, Shalakia. Bear with me. There it is, John chapter 14. All right, verse 16, roll of the spirit, and I will pray. This is Yahweh Shai speaking, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. All right, the comforter is the Holy, is the Holy Spirit, man. Okay? And and the how do we get the, through, through the reading of the scriptures, man? See, when we read the Bible, it don't have the same effect when somebody else reads the Bible. So when we go back and read... Second Esther chapter two verse twenty seven when it says, "Be not weary, for when the day come, when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance." We get comfort out of that. A Hamite is not going to get comfort out of that man when he can't get a uh, 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 gas in his vehicle. Okay, when he can't when he can't reach you know his family members, they're not even going to be thinking about the Bible. But we're going to be meditating on the things that the Scripture said. Okay, because we're comforted by it. And what allows us to be comforted by it? The Holy Spirit, man. If you're not in the Spirit, you don't get, you can't just, otherwise anybody that has a, a copy of a Bible is, is going to be comforted. And that's just not true. The, the Spirit has to be on you, man. All right? Because that's truly what comforts us, man. Okay? Verse 17, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, the world cannot receive. Who is the world? Okay? Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. All right? So these people don't know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? So they, they're not going to be able to click on a YouTube video when the, if the internet happens to still be up. Okay? And, and get the name and call on it and be saved. No. They don't They don't know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? It says, but ye know him. For he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Okay? So, even if the Lord just said, boom, I am going to send a, a, a big plague, a famine, hail, whatever he wants on the day that he wants to send it in, whatever order he wants to send it to, we're going to be the ones comforted, man, not these people. And this is why we pray for fewer days, man. All right? Let me go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 2, verse 28. It says, the heathen shall envy thee, all right? But they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord Jehovah. Okay? The Lord promised us that, man. And we we hope, man. We, we having to work, you know, for, for, for pennies, man. We're having to work knowing we will never pay... No, Imagine knowing, imagine working your ass off knowing it's a debt you can't pay off. It's just like slavery, man. All right? In the ancient world, you know, you had time constraints on slavery. Seven years, and if you ain't paid it back, then you let them go. That don't exist here, man. Okay? You know, you work until you drop dead. And then you still gonna have debt left over. And if you have kids, they gonna pay that debt. You see? So, so, these people, man, are, 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 are in a in a in a absolutely destroyed mindset, man. All right. We we don't want to wake up and, and have this place continue, man. You know. But but we're gonna be free from these things pretty soon, Lord willing. This is the final the final phase of this thing, man. We are sick of looking at you people. Lord will. Lord's will. It says, my hands, verse 29, my hand shall cover thee so that thy children shall not see hell. Okay? So the Lord hand is going to cover us, man. All right? And it's only going to be a thing of faith. It ain't, it ain't about how many, uh, how much carbs you got stocked up in a bunker somewhere. I mean, how much ammo you got. All right? If the hand of the Lord does not shield you from the, the said perils that are, that are prophesied to come, you're going to succumb to them. And you're going to go out bad, okay? And more than likely, a man of substance, a man of the Lord is going to get your substance, okay? 
Uh, are we not rightfully called Jacob? <laughs> As the scriptures say, we're going to supplant all of you people, man. Okay? It's going to look dark. We're going to get tried. Okay? But if we're of that number, if the Lord gives us the spirit to overcome, Lord willing, I believe we are, man, because we're doing the right thing. The Lord gives us that spirit to overcome. It ain't nothing nobody can do. We are good. We're going to be able to walk out in the wilderness with bears and wolves. All right? We're literally just going to be good wherever we go, man. All right? And that's an important thing to remember because you don't want to be hesitant in chanting this place down when we see major events like this occur, when the earthquakes do show up, man. You don't you don't want to be caused for part. You want to be in the spirit of rejoicing, man. All right? Now, yeah, you want to you want to approach things with anxiety and with with uh not with anxiety, but with humility, all right? Which is going to have a little anxiety that that's healthy to keep you to keep you grounded but ultimately in your spirit you want this thing to go i have i'm of the mindset that even if i have to suffer certain things if i have to get grabbed up and be beheaded i'm okay with that man as long as this as long as this devil goes down man read read second maccabees the seventh chapter man the seven sons okay they were glad to they were glad to get hands put on them and put to death knowing that the lord was going to destroy our enemies all right and that's the way that we that's how we have to look at it you know anyway i'll end it there man lord willing this is edifying call halal yahweh bashim yahweh shai bahashim rachat badash shalom